I gotta say, alliances work very well in um, in in CK three in terms of bringing bring, having troops mostly where you want them yeah. to be. Except yeah. again during crusades, which which as a historian I love. Like you have <laughs> you have fifty thousand troops, but they are in you know. 40, 42 different armies total and no disarray. coordination yeah. and you can't make you can't make them all show up at the right place at the right time to defeat the major armies of your enemy um and again as a historian of the crusades i think that's great as a gamer trying to conquer territory i think it's terrible yeah. um, so i really <laughs> england much much better off now much better off now oh look uh, look at his traits yep He's uh, got a mental break there, and that's he's uh, this is great. Uh, he he self uh, flagellates, I guess. That's yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Something Solid else that guy. was briefly touched upon in one chapter of the book, right? That uh, they were during the Black Death, people walking through and flagellating themselves on mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things medieval Christians did in many contexts, not men, not all, but but denying the body or harming the body as a way to enhance the spirit is a pretty kind of normative really global religious aesthetic practice, right, Matt? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, I mean, you know, the the flagellants of the Black Death are kind of the best known, but the practice was was relatively common in, in just chastising the body, causing yourself physical pain in order to appease God and because things are going particularly well. I mean, that was a pretty standard monastic practice. Oftentimes in the earlier Middle Ages or the Central Middle Ages, you would talk about um, hair shirts just really rough woolen shirts that would scratch and tear yeah. the body um, that you would wear underneath your wow. clothes as a way of secretly knowing, um, secretly uh, demonstrating your piety. I actually know a guy with a hair shirt. Mm. Did you just vassalize Barcelona? I just vassalized Barcelona. Hey, he came, he came to me. Well, this is ours now. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's good to have King Sven. The guardian for your child. I mean, but also, I mean, that's also really yeah. interesting, kind of from a medieval perspective as well, because the Pyrenees are, were not the barrier that we oftentimes think of them as. Like we think of, you know, Iberia as something separate, but in the certainly in the 11th, 12th, 13th century, like people moved across the Pyrenees into into both into and out of Iberia all the time. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we were talking earlier about the pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela, which is in the northwest of, of what's now Spain. Like That was an incredibly popular pilgrimage route from all over Europe. And, um, you know, uh, French knights would go into Iberia to fight uh, the Muslims and to help out the Christian rulers as well there. So. Oh, well. I'm going. Goodbye, I'm going hunting. Yeah, goodbye, Rabble. Did you kick yeah. the Rabble out? I kicked the Rabble out. Goodbye, Rabble. Yeah. I'm very stressed. I always, also, the fun thing about going hunting is that sometimes people try to assassinate you during it. That's yep. always fun. You, you really only spend money when we convince you to do yeah. so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, being his friend is actually not that important to me. Wow. Oh, right, you're paranoid. Yeah. I just realized that yeah. you're trying to befriend someone while being paranoid. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was doing it, but I was doing it because I wanted to find out whether he was, you know, going to plot against me. So... 500 that's a, that's stewardship a, ooh, lifestyle that's a lot experience. of lifestyle and the palace of the beavers yes where is she hello she's sending back the something tiger from the forests yeah she's she's in the tiger forest she's wow. gone she's gone home yeah to where where uh, people of her culture live right yeah. very wow. close okay that's quite a journey what is the palace of the beavers uh, well let's find out I think it's a trinket, a trinket book, it's, a book. I think. That's it's it's a, definitely a book. It's not one I've seen before. Building construction time because beavers know how to build things. Yeah, that's that's a pretty great artifact. Actually. Not that you've been building anything, but you know, I, here we are. I did early on. That's how I got my money. <laughs> yeah, you've been spending I, all your money on the Bretons for some reason. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, I feel like I should try to conquer Normandy. It's a you know we've been doing this for two hours, um, and I feel like it's time you, to try to. Do you feel what? Like... You go. You could go south too, and expand your whole. South. No, in the I, Pyrenees. I could go south. I was kind of hoping a crusade would get called. One of the things I really like about Crusade of Kings Three is that my and for me anyway, crusades almost always fail. Yeah. They are almost always 
you almost always have to say yes so the Pope gets mad at you. Um, and um, unless you're really solid, and then you can just let the Pope get mad at you, um, which plenty of people did in the Middle Ages. But that most crusades as military ventures are complete and utter disasters, um, often involving, if I go myself, me getting killed or captured or other things, which is why kings did not go on crusades very often. And I really admire that, because I found in CK2, it was very easy to win a crusade. Um, yeah. And here, it's very hard. Um, and um, historically, that's very true. Most of them were complete yep. disasters. Should be hard. If they were against, like, for Jerusalem. Um, they were... we're going to march our entire army thousands of miles into a desert that we're not used to and try and siege a walled city. Oh, guys, did you have a what's a going plan? on in England? Uh, oh, schism! Oh, what happened? It's a, disaster. it's a disaster. He died from his wounds, which he self-inflicted. Right. Okay. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Time to take Normandy. Do it. Oh, for sure. Do just it. look. Oh, yeah. All right. Just look at that. Look. Just look. So at unfortunately, that. I, unfortunately, I left behind. I should have stuck around for that forced vassalization, right? No, um, you can't do that against another king. No, unfortunately. Yeah. Renowned name. I mean, I'm gonna kind of stick with that too. I mean, I think kind of focusing on on French royal glory and the Capetian dynasty glory. That's why I started. I remember now it was well, hours true. ago. Yeah. No. It was hours yeah. ago. But that's why I started that pathway to really think about kind of the Capetian glory. You know, because we're heading. We're not going to get there today, but we're heading towards the Louis the Ninth world, right? We're heading towards the the Saint Denis. Uh, before that, in Philip Augustus. So, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and just conquer Normandy. Let's start with that. I mean, sailing across and taking the capital would be great, but I think just also an ambition of the actual Philip for a lot of time. He he actually Robert Robert Curthose became a really close ally of Philip the First against um, Robert's brothers. It didn't work out for, so well for Robert in the end, and ended up in prison for twenty years. But hopefully, this will turn out better for you. So it happens. Hey, look, we became friends. That's Despite me never nice. spending any... I never spent any money on it, and I still became friends. So I just called in the Apulians, because I think I think that she's very busy fighting the civil war over here, and that I can probably not do more. Call the Croatians? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to if things go badly. But I think... Just be wary of your supply there. You're placing yeah, close to 8,000 men. Yeah. I mean, I... I could be. I. This is what I. This is what I do. Is I just tend to take the main army yeah. and march it around and break it into pieces as I go, as opposed to pre-breaking them into pieces, which would be better. Um, yeah. Usually, just big army capture, leave us a, a token force to reinforce, and then. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Oh look, merchants with treasures. I don't have the money. I really don't want. It's not worth the stress. You don't want 165 stress in I the mean, middle of a war. <laughs> Compassionate but paranoid is a, is a new challenge for me. and um, Challenge is the exact term, yes. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, but it's, a, but it's a new one. Good. And I just picked up a tapestry, so that's nice. Oh, that's what the... Um, yeah. The, um... Yeah, look at that. That's lovely. Yeah. That's very pretty. That's the, what the adventurer tapestry. found. Yeah. yeah. That's no, what she I, no the adventure got me the beaver book. No, la last time she got the book. This time she got a tapestry. Yeah, the book was just a bonus. Yeah. Oh, oh, the book was a bonus. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot going on in this event. I just want to say, like, there's a lot, there's a <laughs> lot happening. In oh, this event. I yeah. admit, I would <laughs> like to be thrown into an oubliette stark. I mean, yeah. there's a lot. There's just a lot happening here. <laughs> I'm gonna enter and leave by the front door, I'm afraid, because again. I mean, but you lose stress in the yeah. bottom one. Okay. Yeah, but I but I can't afford. You to, could have installed a panic room. Come on. Yeah. I didn't you could have had, go into debt. You you could have had ye old passion oubliette. I can't yes, imagine I how your character would have played if you, as your third trait, had greedy. Oh my god. <laughs> or actually generous. That would be even worse. Or generous. Yeah, that would be even greater. Generous, paranoid, I'm, compassionate. Wow. I mean, I gotta tell you that if if I wasn't doing this on a stream with you. I might have just in, taken that 260 um, stress at age 14 just to kind of see the disaster that played out. It would have been amazing. I was really but, hoping you would, honestly. But I just like I wanted to, I wanted to talk about France and about the things we do in France. 
you know, and, and, and thinking about the creation of France as this really important, interesting place. You could still have talked um, about it while being horrifyingly stressed at near death. I mean, I, as long as no one finds out, yeah. there's nothing saying it didn't happen in yeah, your life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I think mental breaks were kind of a more of a characteristic of the late Carolingians than the, um, the Capetians, but, uh, but it certainly would work here yeah. as well. I yeah. mean, openly having mental breaks, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's that's true. Yeah, we that's thought true. about do we thought about doing the Carolingian Civil War, which is something that Matt talks about as the real Game of Thrones. That it's you know that that is the moment where you have lots and lots of kind of potential legitimate claimants to a throne and oh, watch just out. war. Oh, oh no! Boy, where'd they come from? I mean, I know the answer is up the river, but. Um, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah, no, that just seems chill. like a bad idea. Yeah, just back off and let no, it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gather here and then yeah. be, ready. be ready. That's not even your war enemy, I think. That's the other war that's going I on. I know it is. <laughs> I know it's the other war. <laughs> but I have to beat them. There we go. And your grandeur is going down slowly but surely. Oh, things are not looking good. And things are getting really... It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. The real oh, we're down to the to wire do. here. <laughs> The Even though you're in an active war, you must keep up appearances. That's important. I have to sail across the English Channel, and that's very expensive. It which is. is entirely realistic. Oh, good. They, my allies caught him. <laughs> you're not even helping. <laughs> well, now you are. Oh, they're losing. Yeah. Not anymore. Are those they're not. Europeans? Those what? are who? Sorry. Oh, wow, you just destroyed them. Are those the European allies? The, yeah, the Croatians. Croatian and Croatian. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Croatians. That's right. Okay. I mean, I'm glad I called them in. And now it looks like you're in a safe spot yeah. to conquer the rest. Yeah. I hope. But I, I mean, I can, I'm going to be able to take all of Normandy eventually. But, you know, this thing where other armies keep showing up does seem to make it a little complicated. <laughs> yeah, 6,000 person doom stack is, is pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That... <laughs> <laughs> that ally was I like, like, hi, help, please. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, yeah sure, all right. <laughs> Wham! <laughs> Can you imagine being the commander of that army where he's I've like... I've got to say, alliances work very well in um, in, in CK3 in terms of bringing, bring, having troops mostly where you want them yeah. to be. Except, yeah. again, during Crusades, which, which, as a historian, I love. Like, you have, <laughs> you have 50,000 troops, but they are in, you know... 40, 42 different armies Total and no disarray. coordination, yeah. and you can't make you can't make them all show up at the right place at the right time to defeat the major armies of your enemy. Um, and again, as a historian of the Crusades, I think that's great. As a gamer trying to conquer territory, I think it's terrible. Yeah. Um, so I really, I really, I really admire it as a feature, which is what I want to say. You need to strike a balance there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's it's great. It's great. Yeah. Between man, this is it fun was, to play, and man, this is realistic. Yeah. Well, I just think it was too easy to use Holy War, and in particular Crusades, to amass giant empires very quickly in the previous game. Yeah. Uh, and it's just much, it's much harder. Uh, and I, I think it should be, because cause the Crusades, the fact that the First Crusade succeeded to the extent it did is just so unlikely. Yeah. And the fact that all the other Crusades, except the Fourth, in, in, in but all the other Crusades in the you know, in the Middle East and North Africa were more or less at best stalemates and usually disastrous. Like that's, yep. that's the story. Yep. So I think it's really good. Really, I mean, there's one crusade that's successful and that's the first. Yeah. Did you exactly. just learn I mean, the secret of that? Yeah. Who is Darien Sant Nazar? I don't even know who he is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. But again, it's a Breton. It was about stress. <laughs> you if learned of a yeah, Breton I mean, secret love affair. Congratulations. That's, that's good. I like that. <laughs> um, hey, I won the war. Yes. I didn't even notice. I was too busy, too busy conquering Normandy. Enforced um, demands. These are all mine. Goodbye. There we go. Wonderful. So that last little piece of land there will eventually be yours. Yeah. England has no way yeah. of controlling that after succession. We also have a nice chunk of England itself that is ours now. Oh, oh. you do? Yeah. You have a little chunk of uh, yeah. Cornwall. That's, but that's what I yeah, said. It's fun. Devon, right? Yeah, it's Devon. Yeah. yeah. Devon, sorry, yeah. It was part of um, part of the jurisdiction of Normandy for the war purposes. Yeah, and now it's ours. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what is the history of... I see. Okay. That's pretty great. Earl Richard of Devon. 
nine years old. Enjoy, enjoy sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I mean, it's because it's because William had too many kids, right? Yep. And so too much, too much complexity of succession. And that again is, I mean, it didn't go the way it just went in the game. But did you just like, did you just make side eyed contact at all seven of your children in game there when you said that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I only have four. Only, only four, four. Okay. Only, and only and only two boys. It's not going to be a disaster. <laughs> Probably. Probably not going to be. Oh, this man. is great, though. And I mean, now when you have Devon, you have a place to gather your troops if you would ever yep. want yeah. to venture into England. Yeah. No, for sure. Court physician time. Too paranoid to hire a doctor. I oh, <laughs> love it. Oh, 120? Yep. Whoa. This is why paranoid is my favorite trait Whoa. of the game. Literally get paranoid by hiring a doctor. Oh, oh but you all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> com com comfort eater is fine. That's not too bad. <laughs> oh, stress level two. There you go. Yep. Impro Improvident is not it's great. Gonna, it's for... going to bankrupt me, yeah. yeah. Comf we're going to go with Comfort Eater for sure. Hello, you're, 200 you're following pounds. That path. Yeah. Following I the Philip I'm going to need a donut. Yeah, yeah. Philip the Fat. Philip the That's Fat. Philip the fat. Yeah. You, now you should have yeah. a decision to take to, I think, indulge. Yeah, I, I got... Look, guys, there's a lot happening right now. There's a lot so, happening. <laughs> um... Let's Here, have a ahead. donut. I mean, you've, you've accelerated the retaking of Normandy by the French crown by about 200 years. Yeah. So you're, you're doing yeah. okay. Whoa. Oh, wow. Rad. There's, no, there's just a lot happening. <laughs> Rad. Oh, my God. I mean, I could die right now. Slit, slit, your, <laughs> slit both mine and yours, and he pulls a mace. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So he killed Duke Yud. All right, I'm gonna blind and imprison him. I think that's the correct, the correct decision right now, right? Uh. I'll let him kill himself. No, I'm totally letting him kill himself. Goodbye. I mean, there's moments when like everything is happening all at once. Yeah. It's always I, and and now they want me to hold court too. Right, Welcome to Crusader Kings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I, I'm, I'm going to hit pause for just a minute here. I'm going to get my kids educated by the bishop. Sometimes um, pausing is the right move. I mean just sometimes yeah. Yeah. I I try not to overdo it, but I'm going to very badly educate my own son. Um listen and son. This one too. No. I mean so, someone has to educate them badly. Um what am I going to lose? <laughs> Shit, clean up the murder. There's a visiting duke here yeah, in the exactly. shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was a murder right there. <laughs> That's a guy who... um, <laughs> let's hold court. Used a Clearly maze. the thing to do is we need to hold court and have some have some quiet time together. Well, welcome to court, courtiers. Sire, what is this blood puddle? Hmm? What? What was the question? <laughs> court um, musician. Court jester. <laughs> Oh man! You need a court jester to, for your stress. I, oh boy, do, boy, do I! I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do. Some, we're gonna talk about court positions in a minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh. I really like it when I make the mayors duel with each other. Do it. Now they're anky. An offensive <laughs> monument. I mean, yeah, I. You can yeah. get even more. Relations with the Bretons. Even I mean, I more. think I, it's just the Breton nobility that I want to crush. Yeah. The, the the Breton people are fine. Yeah. I really do like the way you can have multi, like there, it's really not worth trying to take big kingdoms and make them into one one culture. Unified. For one, yeah. that would bother me as a historian. But two, like the game mechanic doesn't reward that. You just you um. You know, there, there are you want some your culture to be strong in connections to others. Yeah, you, you. There are some exceptions that are intended, like um, Afghans are generally fantastic vassals due to their cultural traits. For example, they're very loyal, but maybe not the best suited for all lands. For example, but for example, the <laughs> the con the conquerors into India used a lot of of Afghan um, advisors and. Uh, Did you just make this guy a duke and then instantly turn around and tell him he has to pay everything in tax? I of mean, course. I conquered Normandy for him. Yeah, all right. You're I, welcome. 
He's like, I my liege. And you're like, give me money. <laughs> I don't care. He's for, I mean, war is expensive. He needs to pay. He needs to refill the coffers. What, what yeah, is that's the, the feudal, feudal relations, my, right? Is that the bad news? The tape. Bad news, guys. Here's uh -oh. Alexander. Oh, oh, you old. Lost, you lost your county. So where am I now? Well, let's see what conquered by claimant by by another by another man. You are. I'm st uh, I haven't why? traveled far yet. No. no. Oh, I'm already there. That, that's why. I yeah, you going. haven't gone anywhere. Yep. There you are. Yep. You're still right here in Halsinga Land, where you used to rule, and now you are but a wandering ex-ruler. Sad times. Wan Sad times. Wandering Sad the times. Swedish countryside with your wife, yeah. hanging out you know. with your four with your four kids. Me, my wife, and my four kids just <laughs> yeah. roaming the world. At least I, I hope I still had some money from my time as right. count. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll go ahead. Can I afford it? I can't. Right, I spent all my money on other things. Neither of them. You wanted a statue, I, remember? You wanted a statue. I, I didn't want a statue. I wanted the Bretons to not be mad at me. All right, let's talk about <laughs> court positions, because I, I love this. We're going to go ahead and just throw my terrible... Archbishop back as physician, because I think that will be good. Um, I want to say that medieval medicine had its own theories and was complicated and worked very well. Correct. Uh, <laughs> worked well. Uh, right. Go ahead. Pick it it up. I mean, sometimes, but... Mostly by pure luck? Yeah, it worked well. Just... There were, I mean, there were theories of medicine... Understand it. It. There was a, you know, I think what we would call it today is oftentimes just think about it like it's folk medicine. Yeah. Is that, uh, you know, there there were traditions of like poultices and, and herbal remedies and stuff like that, which absolutely did help people. And they knew how to treat certain, certain wounds. They knew about things like they didn't know that there was, they didn't have like a, a germ theory or anything like that. Right. But like they knew that things like infections were bad and they could happen from cuts and they could, you know, cause lots of problems. And so they knew how to treat those things. So. But, like, even, you know, we talk about this in the book, for example, like, even during the Black Death, the, uh, at the University of Paris, the medical doctors, like, they came up with a theory of bad air, that this, this plague was transmitted yeah. via close contact with people, which, which is not wrong, right? So they came up with ideas like quarantine. And, you know, um, you know, one of the things one of the popes did, for example, was sat by a roaring fire, which seems to have kept away uh, the vermin, which, which carried, um, you know, a lot of the, the rats and things like that. Like, they weren't, they weren't dumb you know, in the Middle Ages. They just they just didn't have the scientific advances that we had. Yeah. They didn't name things the same way that we did. I think I need to build up my, my court a little bit. Is this Simon's kid? Yeah. Huh. I like I, that I don't you, even remember. You made your former uh, uh, lover, or actually your lover that you sent into a, a nunnery. nunnery. You made her yeah. your seneschal. I mean, it's great, right? She, she's trustworthy. This is the guy whose secret I got, I think. Let's definitely bring him in. I just felt like my when I was when I was going about appointing um, appointing people, I thought my court was a little scant. Um, that yeah. I needed some more. I needed some more people. Uh, let's go ahead and keep people from doing schemes for me. Um, and so I thought I'd bring some people in and then marry them and then just kind of build up my. Build up my court a little bit with some high quality. You still have that quality. filter on, by the way, that requires them to be close in age. Just so you know, maybe that's intentional. Oh, thank you. That is a good. It is not intentional. Thank you. Burr, 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 burr. But we're definitely marrying this very clever lady in. I see. You're ah. producing your own courtiers in the long run. Smart. That's 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 my goal here, right? Is to. Is to it's just to build up the court a little bit so that they, you know, that over the generations they have, um, they have some, they have kids and the kids, you know, they'll be, they'll be more interesting people. Ooh. Emma's husband, Emma, there's a lot happening. This is, I mean, but this, is a, this is also a thing that medieval kings in the past were actually really concerned about, right? Is like surrounding themselves with people and being really yeah. deep involved in the marriage politics of even minor courtiers yeah right because they had long they knew they had long-term effects yep who do you want around you every day well i hate steve so not steve yeah. um but also that like there's a whole particularly as 
not, I mean, in the 11th century, but then really as you move to the 12th century, there's this whole court culture. Um, you know, this talks about chivalry, but also we talk about Marie de France, right? Bringing musicians and poets and writers and chroniclers yeah. um, and, 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 and intellectuals and priests and, and, you know, historians who may well, may well be monks or other, right? Like all these people um, who certainly populate our book and populate our histories and wrote the histories, wrote our sources, they are coming through court culture, not just and not just in Paris or not just in the, the to the kings, but like the court of the Dukes of Aquitaine, really important. Um, so, bringing people in. So Hello. I've got my sister back. Your and sister, the these... evil ravener who tried to murder you. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm paranoid about it, but I'm also um, compassionate, so it's a little complicated. And her dead husband. Mm -hmm. Poor I really dead don't husband. Care. I really don't care. Yeah, her poor dead husband. I mean, I really thought she had a chance there um, of of making Denmark Capetian. Uh, these people are still too young. This guy's here now. I mean, I'm not going to give them a title or anything yet, but I've got him. I've got him here. And now we have way more people to. Um... Uh, give court positions to if you want. Yep. Right, that's what I was. That, that's why I brought these people in. Carefully, ca carefully stacked our roster. Yeah, it's to restack the roster. There we go. Jester. So you made a noble woman your jester. Yes, I love it. There's actually some logic I mean, to that. That if they are noble or landed, they get terribly <laughs> offended. If they I are know, just know. some somebody, they they like it because that's a fancy job at a fancy court. Yeah. Check out the uh, cultural map history. mode. I want to see. I want to see this. Oh, I'm bringing in. I'm bringing in the. What am I checking out? The cultural map mode. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, you got that. Um, you just. You I got just that territory back in. Okay. They, they just came. They just came back to me. Oh, yep. There, there it is. In the, in the southeast there of your realm, Arpitan. Yeah. Arpitan. I mean, and I just think. I mean, Arpitan. Right. I mean, it's just. I find that people don't understand that there's no such thing in some ways as France, right? There's yeah. no such thing as any of these, as Germany, as Italy, right? That there's, I mean, the, the cultural line here between North and South in France is just so important for centuries, centuries. Yeah. Um, and it's really not until the Albigensian Crusade that even political authority starts to move North um, over these, over these regions. Still not asking my head of faith for gold. I'm not going to do it. Why not? Yeah, why not? I don't like the Pope that much. That's okay. fair. I could form a hybrid culture. With Breton. Yeah, there you go. With Breton, do it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's do it just for the sake of showing off showing off this great... Look, no, 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 look, look at that. Look at that. Betrayal. That doesn't like it. But we're going we're gonna to do it. Um, I think it should, we sake. should only do it if, if, uh, if you get to design it. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do I get to design it? No, not you. Matthew, yeah. do it. Oh, you want Matthew? Matthew, Matthew All right. It? All right. Let's see here. Um. Yeah. Def uh, hmm. <laughs> All right. What, what do you want? What, what do you want me to do first? Do you want to do the pillars first? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's do courtly. Solid. Uh, we have to pick one of the Breton things, I think. The. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this. This is. So I, like <laughs> I just don't like it at all. I think. I think David. David, you can. You. You do this because I'm just. I, I'm just raising my objections. Are you? Are you okay. just? Are you just biased oh. against the Bretons? Is that what's going on? Let's just let's just talk about it because again I think this is a really neat neat feature of royal court that you can create these hybrid cultures once you build some connections a, a, across. It is absolutely not what the French do. Yeah. Um, that is not what not what the Capetians do. The Capetians really start to double down on something we could call the idea of Frenchness, right, Matt? That it, I mean, it's not it's not modern Frenchness, but it's on it's on that that pathway, um, and so that because it supports their it supports their ambitions. So in a really strong instead way. of doing this, then maybe what you should yeah. look into is establishing some sort of tradition for fr uh, French. If we think about kind of the French royal, the the French cathedral building, right, and monastic building as well, I think that would be a really 
kind of strong yeah. place to, yeah. to put. I'm, I'm not going to hit 7,000 prestige anytime never. soon. Yeah. But you could, um, you could I mean, hit 2,000. But... Yeah. And Garden Architect was only 2,000 because I think right, well, uh, let's, let's, you're currently let's aligned. Some, let's work on some prestige here. Host a lavish feast. Wow, I because I'm a comfort eater now, feasts are very good yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh, perfect. They can offset your rampant paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I Get paranoid, eat 18 turkeys. That's it's right. fine. Not, tur not turkeys, but, you know. Oh, Turkeys are a new world. Oh, of course. Birds. What they're have they they're, done? They're breaking things. Um, As I'm going to yell not the count. Keep the duke happy. At Medieval Feast, though, especially Royal Feast, uh, they loved stuffing meat inside of other meat. They did. That's so where that Who doesn't really like stuffing meat in like, front of other meat? The, the, yep. the, the proto-turducken came from. Exactly. Like, the turducken. Cornish. Like, they would they would have loved that. They didn't have a turkey, but they they would stuff things inside Cornish, pigs. Yeah, Cornish hen inside, inside of a chicken. Inside all of the way down. Yeah. So. You are very close to 2,000 prestige now. That was a very effective feast um, for prestige. Um, let's hope Louis... I gotta say that... A lot of kids die when they go on visits. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I've fixed that. I've fixed that. I've found the issues. If they die now, it's due to a, a random chance that isn't disproportionately weighted in favor of drowning. Even though there were a lot of drowning kids in the Middle Ages, you, you it was really a bit too true. much. <laughs> you, you really it's did true. like kids drowning there for a little bit in game, man. No, it did get fixed up. I stamped out all of those weird <laughs> weights and bugs. Yeah, man, it's not as bad as the alligators. Oh Rand random God. alligators. Ah, there we go. That was fantastic. I loved seeing that. I mean, I know it wasn't, you know, intended, but still, like, random alligator encounter in the middle of nowhere. It's like, oh, uh, wh what? Let's put in garden architects right now. I love the ability to manipulate these cultures yeah. in ways that either fit my sense of the history or totally break my sense of the history. Yeah. Um, can I, can I, can I, 30 years or so until it is established. So you yeah. could say that you've planted the seed. Oh, he oh, 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 got me. It's terrible. I had to do it before Troy did it. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, we'll terrible. just put that one. We'll just put those flower ponds to bed. Oof. A chest. So I... um. My first advisor in grad school was a woman named Barbara Hanawalt, who mm -hmm. wrote a book on, um, wrote about children and wrote about peasants. Mm -hmm. And the, the source she used for it were coroner's roles. So on the one hand, she joked she was worried that, you know, she had a lot of people, kids, tripping and falling into very small drainage ditches and drowning. Like that was a major way, as you were saying, of, of kids drowning. And on the one hand, she said, you know, you can find out so much about their life. And she wrote these really important books. Growing up in medieval London is, is, is sort of her most famous book. But she once confessed to me she was worried that she was only writing the history of the great, the great clumsy people of Europe. Um, the ones who, you know, who tripped over stones and fell in ditches. And that she was totally wrong about their lives. Yeah. It was just the klutzes that she was writing about. Yeah. Um, Someone I, sent me sources of that, yeah. exactly that. Uh, like yeah. list, a list of ways children had died in medieval London. And the yeah, the drownings water, were yeah. outnumbering everything else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just there's a lot of water. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of ditches and things like that. So yeah, well, um, not a lot of knowledge of swimming. No. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, that is that is almost it for time. We have wow. we have we have been at this for a while, um, and it's 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 slowly wrapping up. We are we are almost to the end of our time. Uh, so I wanted to you know take a moment, say thank you. Matthew, David, thank you very much for showing up, being here, talking about your book. Um, Altner, always a pleasure, you know. Um, any any parting thoughts, gentlemen? This has been an immense amount of fun. Uh, I think that I would love, as you know, we, we were talking about earlier, like, you know, the more students that come into our classes because they've been playing CK3, the, the happier I think David and I are, um, you know. And if they happen to read the Bright Ages along the way, it'd be great. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We'll yeah, this has been really yeah. fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in the meantime, for those of you that don't already know, this is the the book we are discussing today. If you have not already picked up your copy of The Bright Ages, A New History of Medieval Europe, I would definitely recommend it. I have read it myself and can personally vet it. Um, Mr. Oldner, what, what were your thoughts on the book? I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I um, plowed through, I think, 
five chapters in a row yeah. three days ago or something just because I was so engrossed and yeah. I it it's very um relevant mm -hmm. to Crusader Kings. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many parallels, so much in the book that is also in the game and so much in the game that is in the book. Yep. That it's it's just good fun. Good good to read if you really like the period. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and we, we really enjoyed it. I'm glad we got a coffee and got a chance to, to sit here and talk with you fine gentlemen. Um, I'm, I'm sure you uh, can recommend your own book, though, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, what I want to say is that uh, I've really enjoyed, I mean, as a long-time CK2 player and then as a shorter-time CK3 player, but, you know, I haven't played it um, actually since before the release uh, and then played it since the release a lot. I, I'm really impressed with Royal Court, um, that it was, it's doing something, I mean, we're not, you know, we're here, we're here, you know, to, because we each have something we, we're interested in promoting, right. but, right. you know, I'm, I, I was, I had no idea what to expect with Royal Court when, when um, I was told that this was the thing that was coming out, but it really does, I mean, it makes, it makes ruling harder. Yeah. It makes it, and it, but it creates opportunities too. And, um, you know, my students always like, well, he was king, why couldn't he just, but whatever it is, and that's just not how medieval kingship. There exactly. were no absolute monarchs, right? Exactly. It was yep. contested, contingent monarchy. Um, and uh, I really, I really appreciate the way Royal Court um, builds a system to make it part of the game. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that's really wonderful about like the the, the partnership between you know the book and the game is you know that we're really kind of complementing the same things. Like we were talking about earlier, the way that people could move. Right, the way that power kind of operated, the way that you have to deal with different factions, the way that you you know, it's not just about warfare, it's also about kind of culture and religion and and all these other things and how they're interwoven within one another, within and, and between one another. And that's that's something we try to bring out in the book, and I think it comes out really, really exquisitely in the game as well. Yep. Yep. And like I said, I, I know uh we very much enjoyed the book. We are glad to hear that you enjoyed the game. Thank you for the game, by the way. It's it's really good. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely didn't have anything to do with it. I just got to say, the minute you make Venice playable, I hope I get an email. <laughs> so I, want, I want in. Well, we'll see what we can do. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> uh, those of you in the community, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you have not already, definitely head over to Discord, uh, discord.gg slash ck3 to join the Crusader Kings Discord. Uh, we are on social media. This VOD will be playable on Twitch for many, many moons afterwards. We will also be pushing to YouTube. Uh, gentlemen, I will get the link to you when I get that. Uh, in the meantime... Thank you again, um, David and Matthew, for being here. Thanks Thank you. so much. Thank you, Alexander, as always, for hosting with me. Uh, pick up Bright Ages now, and we'll see you around, folks. Have a good weekend.